In today's lesson, I'm going to show you a full Sweet Peaking Arpeggio workout that you can use to warm up and you can also blend these sounds or these arpeggios into your music or into your improvisation. And I'm going to show you how to do that at the end of the video. But first, let me demonstrate the full arpeggio for you. All right, let me play it slowly and then explain it. As you can see, I'm just sweep picking, but I have also some pull-offs inside. And harmonically, we are just in C major, and we are doing the arpeggio over every degree of the scale. So we start with a major 7 arpeggio. So we're doing 1, 3, 5, major 7. We skip the root here, and we do the third, the five, and the major seven again. So, and going back, we do the same thing. So, and now we have to apply the same concept to every different color, meaning minor or half diminished or dominant. The next degree would be minor, and this is a. A D minor 7, so we have 1, B3, 5, B7, B3 again, so we skip the root again, 5, and minor 7 again, so. And the next one is easy because it's the same thing, for, so the E minor 7, just a whole step higher. Then also the next one we have it for free because it's again a major 7, it's the 4th degree, it's an F major 7 and it's the same than the C, right? Now we have to change a note because we have a dominant, so we have a minor 7, but the rest is the same. So we go to G and we do 1, 3, 5, minor 7, 3, so major 3rd, five and seven again. So. And here you can choose if you want to do it with the third finger or with the second finger. Oh, sorry. It depends where you want to have the stretch. I think I prefer with the third. And then we have again a minor chord, the A minor 7, on the 12th position. Same thing that we did for the D and the E. And now we have the half diminished. So the half diminished, we have to take the minor 7 and modify the fifth, right? So we have one minor third, minor fifth, or flat 5, sorry. Then we have the minor 7, again minor 3rd, flat 5, and minor 7. And then we're back to the first one, just an octave higher. And then we go back exactly the same way. Rhythmically, we just have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 
groups of six notes, right? We change direction on the next beat. We have six notes per beat, meaning we have 16th triplets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 and so on. That's the rhythm. Now, of course, you can use that as a warm-up exercise. I suggest that you start slow and then build it up. And when you're warm, you're going to be able to do it better. But um, actually, the best thing you could do is to use this material musically and try to blend it into your playing. And you don't, you don't, of course, need to take the whole arpeggio. So maybe you can just work with the upper structure of the arpeggio and do something musical, right, with it and improvise with it. So for example, Because if you do that, then you're making music. If you just do, that's just an exercise. It's just motion. But if you use that in a musical context, then you are actually taking material and making music with it. And of course, that's the best thing you can do. An exercise is just an exercise. It's never going to come out in your playing. But if you try to do that kind of exercises, then you're going to be able to really come up with new ideas. And also with new patterns. And patterns always work very, very nice and are easy to follow. So I strongly suggest that you try to work with that material and not just do it as a technical exercise. All right, I hope that was useful. Let me know in the comments if you liked it or give me a like. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right, see you for the next video.